Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. In our last segment, we talked a lot about the Etsy password file and the various curious accounts and fields one might encounter, but we didn't really talk about the library functions used to look up account information. We'll rectify this with this video. We'll also take a look at the group database and the library functions to perform lookups against that. But let's first remind us what the password database looks like. As a text-based file, performing lookups should be easy, and we could imagine processing the file one line at a time. So what do the library functions to look up user information look like? Well, we have a few functions. For starters, here we show the two functions used to look up a user's account information by UID and by username. They each will return a struct password on success, which contains all the fields we've seen in the file Etsy password. Note that on some platforms, the struct password contains additional fields. For example, on BSD systems, you may also find the login class, a logical grouping of accounts to assign certain resource limits, for example, as well as an account expiration date or a password change time. Since this information is not stored in Etsy password, where does that live? The answer is the master password file, also found under Etsy. This file contains all the fields from Etsy password, plus the additional fields. This file also includes the encrypted, well, hashed password, which we noted is not actually present in Etsy password, where we only find the asterisk placeholder. This is because Etsy password needs to be readable by all users to allow getpwuid and getpwnam calls to succeed without superuser privileges. The password file itself is then generated from the Etsy master password file using certain tools. Now, for example, consider your ls command. When running ls-l, it will print out the usernames of the file owners. But as you know, the struct stat does not include the username, only the uid. That is, you actually only have the numeric IDs. In order for ls to translate the uids into names, it needs to call getpwuid for each. So if Etsy password was not readable by everybody, ls couldn't do this. But since Etsy password has a password field, that it mean that any user could see the other users, albeit hashed passwords, and then stage an offline dictionary attack and crack the passwords in their spare time. This doesn't sound so good, so we moved the password hash into Etsy master password, where we could then also add additional fields without breaking compatibility with the old Etsy password format. Note over here, we do see the hashed password entry in the master password file but that requires superuser privileges. Other Unix systems may use a similar approach. Linux, for example, uses Etsy Shadow, and getpwuid and friends do not return the additional information. For those systems, there are a bunch of separate library functions, including the getpwnam equivalent, getspnam, shown here. Calling this function will likely fail if you are not UID 0 as Etsy Shadow, like Etsy Master Password, is readable only by root for the same reasons. Now, with getpwuid and getpwnam, you can look up an individual user's password file data, but what if you want to iterate over all the entries, similar to how you might want to iterate over all directory entries? For that, we have getpwend. Getpwend will read the password database sequentially, but in an order that is opaque to you. That is, even though it may look to you like it goes in the text order you observe in the file, you should not rely on that. setpwend rewinds the stream back to the beginning, and endpwend closes it. Let's see those calls in action. Here's a simple program to look up a user's information and print it in the format we used from Etsy password. We allow the program to iterate over the entire database, or to look up an individual user. Looping over all entries is rather straightforward, as we will see. There. All we do is we simply loop over get end and call it until it returns null. Printing the information then only requires formatting the members of the struct password. But to ensure we don't accidentally dereference null and segfault, we add a simple assertion over here. 
if we're given an argument, we have to decide if it's a username or a UID. So we are borrowing the who function from user bin ID, which will first attempt to look up the input as a name, and if that fails, try to convert it to a string, and then look up the user by ID. Okay, now if we run it without arguments, we basically get back our Etsy password file. This will look like so. If we look up the user with UID 0, we get back root. And if we look up user 1, well, no surprise, we will get the devil himself. Likewise, looking up the user by username gives us the expected result. But remember, we had two LSS. Which one did we get? As before, we got back UID 1004, which shows that getpwnum will only give you a single user if multiple users are found, just like getpwuid gave you only root and not root and tor. First match wins. Sadly, we have no avocado. Anyway, now let's get my user's information. Note that the password field here is an asterisk, but if we run this program with EUID0, then we get the hashed password. That is, getpwnum will provide you with this information from Etsy master password if you are EUID0, but return to you an asterisk if you are a mere mortal. And yes, you can now pause the video here, steal my password hash and start cracking it. Good luck. Remember Fred? Fred didn't have a password. But here we get an asterisk. But Etsy password doesn't have a password set. And if we run with EUID0, then we get no password. And again, the asterisk is not actually retrieved from the password file, but handed to you by getpwnum based on your EUID. If it is zero, you get whatever is an Etsy master password. Otherwise, you get an asterisk regardless of what is in that field an Etsy master password or Etsy password. Okay, so much for the password database, but we also discussed groups and group membership. For that, we have another database file, Etsy group. Much like Etsy password, Etsy group contains a group name, a hashed password field, a numerical group ID, and finally an array of usernames identifying the members of the group. But wait, why is there another field for a password hash? Of course, this goes back to the olden days of Unix once more. It used to be the case that a user could only be a member of a single group at one time, so if they wanted to access a file owned by another group, they would have to change their group. To change your group, you'd run the new group command and provide the group password. Nowadays, we have supplementary groups, but the new group command still exists and works. Here, let's demonstrate. Here, we see a file owned by the group guest of which user jshauma is not a member, so can read the file. But the new group command can change your primary group ID and start a new shell for you. If there is a password hash in the group file, then the user has to provide that password. Okay, let's give it a spin. New group guest. Okay, we enter our password. And look at that, I am now in the group guest. And of course, can now read the file. But note that the Etsy group file does not show me as a member. And it shows the password hash, unlike Etsy password. Don't we have a separate file for the group password hash? Maybe Etsy master group? The answer is no. Group passwords are hardly ever used, and supplementary group membership sufficiently solves the problem of granting the access without requiring managing group passwords. So you will likely never run into this. But hey, this class is also intended to give you sufficient geek creds to impress other Unix nerds, even if that's not practically useful. You're welcome. Now, let's see. The group games doesn't seem to have a password. Can I become a member of that group? New group says, sorry. It doesn't understand an empty password field. But note that even on failure, the new group command still started a new shell. 
Oh well, as I said, it's a rarely encountered too. Okay, now how do we get group information from etsy group? Just by get pw name and get pw uid, you get your entries for the etsy group using the functions get grgit and get grnap. And you get back a struct group. And just like for etsy password, you can also iterate over the whole etsy group file sequentially using get grn. But groups are somewhat complicated. As we know, we have a primary group ID, which is the group ID listed in Etsy password. And we can have a number of supplementary groups, as listed in Etsy group. Now POSIX provides us with a get group syscall, but it does not define whether or not that includes your primary git. So if you want to get all groups you're a member of, you need to also look at Etsy password. The more comprehensive get group list function is non-standard. So check if your Unix version supports it before, before relying on it. Here, let's implement the groups command. You'll find that it is surprisingly more complex than handling user information. As before, we handle arguments based on username or user ID. But since we don't know how many groups the user is a member of, we have to dynamically allocate space for all groups. And so we start out with a sysconf to determine a reasonable max. If we are given a username or a UID, then we can call getGroupList. But it's possible that the number of groups the user is a member of doesn't fit into our initially allocated array of groups. So if that fails, we have to allocate more memory and then call it again. If we weren't past an argument, we first get the primary git. And then call get groups. Finally, we have a list of group IDs, but we want to print out the group names. So we have to call get grgit for each and then print out the names. Okay, let's run it. This looks good. What group is root a member of? Okay. Let's confirm. Here we see my username is not included in the Etsy group file entry for my primary git, because my primary git is included in Etsy password. Now let's change our group membership and see if our program behaves. Yep, good. We exit the new group shell and back to normal. There we go. Oh, and one more thing. The id command includes similar functionality to the groups command. If you look at the inodes, you should find that they are the same command. That is, id is a program that was written to behave differently based on how it is called. It looks at argv0 and behaves one way if it's called id, another way if it's called groups. A neat little trick. All right, we've seen two of the critical system databases, etsy password and etsy group. The functions used to access the data in them are similar, and so it should come as no surprise that we have other similar functions to access other system resources. The general pattern here is, we have a certain resource that is described in a plain text file under etsy, and for each we have library functions that retrieve the resource into a data structure. These functions generally follow the get foo by bar pattern to allow you to look up things. We'll see several of these functions in future lectures. All right, let's recap what we learned. Handling the data from Etsy password is relatively straightforward. The password hash is kept in a separate file that only EUID0 can access. On BSD systems, this file is called Etsy master password, and the getpw functions will automatically provide you with a hash. On other systems, you may find the file Etsy shadow and need to use different functions. We noted that groups can have passwords. This is rarely seen, but an interesting thing to keep in mind. And we've learned that iterating over a user's groups is surprisingly more of a pain than iterating over their password data. 
The functions we saw here are all illustrative of a consistent approach to system resources, and we'll see a few more similar calls in the future. Okay, this wraps up this video segment. In our next session, we'll try to make sense of time itself. But be warned, time is an illusion, and file times doubly so. Until then, cheers!